Well, hey there, everyone. This is Jarris Withrow from jwithrow.com. And if you have been following along with this program, learning to play guitar for worship leading, then this is the halfway point. Excellent. Congratulations, because that means you have learned a lot of incredible new chords. You've learned how to play in some of the most important keys in worship leading. You've learned some fantastic theory about how to hear the key of a song. And eventually, that should allow you to be able to make your own chord charts. And that's actually what we're going to focus on today, is creating an incredible, excellent, clear chord chart. A chord chart can make or break a worship service. Trust me on this one. I have played with some excellent musicians, but we had some bad chord charts. And all you can think about is the chord chart because that's where all your attention goes. Instead of being able to focus on the flow of the worship service, instead of being able to actually uh, listen to what you're saying, connect with the Lord during worship, all you can think about is, oops, that chord's wrong, or oops, that section of the song is missing, you know. So a great chord chart is going to uh, allow you to focus on what's really important during worship, which is the actual leading of it, right? Um, and a great chord chart is going to make things easy and smooth as far as, um, as far as reading the chart, right? So I'm going to teach you how to do that today, okay? So you need to have a computer here. Um, make sure you have Microsoft Word open. Most people have that. It's the industry standard for creating documents. For um, And uh, if you don't have Word, uh, if you have some equivalent kind of program, you can open that up. I'm sure it can do the same things. Um, but it's great to create things in Microsoft Word first because no matter what kind of chord chart programs or apps are going to come out, they're all going to be able to import Word documents because everybody knows who's creating apps that Word is the standard. Okay, so I always create the original in Word and then I import it into my program that, that uh, reads chord charts or can change chords on the fly or whatever, which I'll talk about that at the end. So, um, make sure you have that. Uh, there are three ways that, that I can create a chord chart or I can find the chords for it. Three major ways. And I'm going to talk about the first two right now. And the first two is to actually use another person's resource, right? Somebody else who has already created the chord chart. And the third way is if you have actually created it all yourself, which is the most reliable way. And uh, oftentimes you get to be the most creative. But since you're just starting out and that might be difficult for some of you, um, one of the best ways to do it is to find it online. There's one way that's very reliable to find online and one way that is very hit or miss. And I'm gonna show you what that is, okay? So first things first, you open your browser and I'm just going to search on Google. I'm going to search for uh, a song called Ever Be by Bethel. Okay, Bethel Music. So I'm going to search Ever Be. Look, it's already written out there for me. Ever Be Chord Chart Bethel. All right. And the first thing that's going to come up, since Bethel is a very well-known worldwide, you know, sort of music ministry, um, most of these, these bigger names are going to have all the chord charts on uh, on their website, which is great because those, like right here, we can see this is coming from BethelMusic.com, pretty much guaranteed that this is going to be um, very a very reliable chord chart here. So if I open it up, let's see what happens. Ah, yes. Okay, so you can tell this is their website. This is the song. Look, they have made this, and you know it's going to be correct because somebody from their music ministry made it. And we're also going to see that sometimes <laughs> they can be still off, um, even if somebody has made it but uh, from the music ministry itself. But if if a band is not as well known, a lot of times you'll get a site like like down here where you, where you can just tell it's not from Bethel Music themselves. It's from like this tab place or whatever. And oftentimes if you go to those websites, it's going to be very hit or miss Okay, on the on the chords. Um, sometimes, you know, you just have some person from somewhere in the world who's created a chord chart, put it on there, and who knows if it's right. A lot of times I've seen chord charts where it's completely wrong. I mean, none of the chords are right. Sometimes half of them are. Sometimes they're not over the right word. Sometimes it doesn't have the whole song. So I would be very hesitant to find a, uh, unless, unless you're just in a bind and you have to have something. <laughs> but I would just rather try it by ear than find one, than, than try and trust somebody who you have no no idea who they are. Um, they could be giving you all sorts of wrong chords. So if you can find it from the music website, do that. So, and that's what I've done here, okay? Now I will say as far as creating the chord chart yourself, 
Um, as, as we make this core chart, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, how you could create it yourself from scratch. But right now, let's do this. I think this is the, the, the best step, actually, is to find it online. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy just basically from where it says intro all the way down to the bottom of the chord chart. You don't want anything else in there, okay? I'm pressing Command C to copy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on over to Microsoft Word, okay? And I've got a blank document here, new. The first thing I do before I even paste it is I change the dimensions. Most uh, documents will start out with sort of this default. I actually go to the format of the document and I will change the margins. I like to put half an inch, so I'll put 0.5 press tab, 0.5, tab, 0.5, and I'll put it on each of them because most printers can at least print with half inch margins, so it gives you a lot of room to put a lot of lyrics. Okay, see now my little cursor is way up here. All right, I'm now going to paste, so Command V, and here it is, I have pasted it in. Now here is the first thing you notice. You're gonna notice that the format from online, right, which over here, right, you can see the chords are above the lyrics. Well, once you paste it, you realize the chords are not above the lyrics anymore. They're beside. And this is a pretty common thing. When you copy and paste something from online, it's in a web format, and then you paste it into a Word document, it is rarely going to be exactly the same. It's typically going to have something like this where something's a little out of whack, and then you have to go and do everything. And that is just the name of the game when it comes to creating chord charts. That is just what you have to do. Um, I, you know, on these band websites, I wish there was something where you could just download the Word document. Some of them do have it. Even when you go to print chart, um, it has it in a PDF file where it's two pages. And I never, ever create a chord chart with two pages. Okay, I, I want things as simple as possible. I don't want to have to to scroll through my iPad on multiple pages or have to flip a page. I only make chord charts with one page. And in this case, we can't change it, we can't do anything about it, it's a PDF, so I don't even want to print it, okay? It's, it's, it's not gonna work. And anyhow, I always make the same format for every chord chart anyway, just because we're talking about clarity, right? And if you have a worship team they're leading with you or a, a lot, um, the more consistent you can make your chord charts, the easier, of course, it's going to be for your, your team. They know what to expect. They know what the chord charts are going to look like. They know how the chord charts are going to flow. And, of course, anything that can make it easier, do it. Okay? So, from here, what, what I'm going to do is I've, I've, I've changed the margins. And now I'm going to start to begin to change it into my formatting, the format I use for every chord chart. And I've done this a lot, okay? I've seen thousands of chord charts, and from all that experience, I've found the most clear-cut way to create a chord chart. So I've done all the trial and error for you already. I'm just showing you after all these years of playing what looks best. So you're getting the good deal on this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the formatting. I've got a little clear formatting button right here and I'm just gonna press it and that takes everything to its bare bones default uh, formatting, okay? Because sometimes when you copy stuff from the web it'll have weird spacing things or all sorts of weird stuff and that clears it all out, okay? So I highlight it all, I'm, I'm pressing Command A. Anytime you can do a shortcut when you're creating chord charts, like a keyboard shortcut, take it, okay? So Command A uh, highlights everything. I change it to Arial, so I type in Arial. Arial is a sans serif font, meaning there's no extra little squiggly lines on anything. It's very easy to see from far away. And I keep it in 12 point font. Okay, and this is how I do every single chord chart. And if a song is shorter, sometimes I'll even increase the font size, maybe 13 or 14. Okay. So here it is. We can see it's starting to come together. We're starting to see the different parts. It's starting to look a, a, a little clearer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate the sections of the song. So I can already see that they've got it sectioned off for me. And this is actually how I like to do it. I like to have all caps for each section of the song. So I go through, I highlight each one, and then I bold and underline each one. Okay. And that allows you to see the sections pretty easy just at a quick glance. And I also, because on song the the app I use my chord chart app for my iPad uh, when you put colons at the end of it it recognizes it as a section heading easier and so I put colons plus it when you're just looking at it it your eye can see those two dots it helps me even more to see 
uh, the sections of the songs actually. All right. So if you're following along, make sure there's a bolded underline with a little colon after it, and then you want to make sure that all the sections of the song are there. Some uh, people, when they create chord charts, won't put all the sections in, like in the way they actually want the song to go. They'll just they'll just put in like like you can see here it goes intro, verse one, pre-chorus, chorus, verse two, but then there's no cor there's and then pre-chorus, but there's no chorus after the pre-chorus, right? And in the uh, and in the real song, we would want to play a chorus right here. Okay, and then there would be another chorus after the bridge, but they don't have that added in. They're just putting in the bare bones uh, sections of the songs. Well, for me, because a lot of times I'm leading with a group that has just come together, right? Oftentimes there'll be spontaneous spontaneous worship, or maybe I'm leading with a, a, a group that hasn't had time to practice during the week, and I've, I've just come in for the weekend, and we're all together. And the only time we have to practice is right before, like an hour or two before the worship set. Well, if that's the case, um, they don't have time to memorize everything. They don't have time to memorize the song maps, you know, which what's the order of, of each section of the song. And so I want to already have it completely laid out for them. So they don't have to do the guesswork. They don't have to think about that during the worship set itself. I don't want them to have to think about anything extra. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy this chorus heading right here, command C it, and then I will insert it where I want it. I want a chorus, or I'm sorry, not there. Let me undo that. I'll put it right here after the pre-chorus, and then I'll put it right here after the bridge because I want to end on the chorus. Now, I've got it almost right. I can see that there's this intro at the beginning. I also know, okay, I also know that I want an intro after, uh, after this chorus. I want to play the chords a little bit before verse 2. And so now I have the correct song map. So there's no guesswork now for my band that's playing with me. This is exactly how I want the song to go. And the cool thing about this is if you want to change it up, if you want to repeat something more, you want to cut something out, then then it's easy. You just call it out over the microphone, right? You know, you're, you're leading and you say, okay, let's sing that again. And that, and, and that gives the cue to your whole band that you're going to sing it again. But if you don't give cues, or if you don't want to, then you've got this perfect song map already laid out. Nobody's guessing. Mm, I love it. All right, last thing you want to do here to get everything ready before we start messing with the chords is see how we've got all this blank space out here? We've got all this blank space. You want to make sure if there's any lines or lyrics that you can condense that you do that. Like right here, I can see in verse 2. So I'm going to put little commas and then put a space in between everything. A lot of times put commas in between my different phrases. Okay, and that's just going to shorten it up. Now everything looks to be about the same length. Okay, if I were to, you know, if I were to go up here to this line and put it here, see how it's coming down to the next line. So I don't, I don't want that. So as long as it's all fitting, then it should be good. All right, I'm going to put the name of the song at the top. This is Ever Be. All right, give a little space. Ever Be, and I like to de underline it and put it at 18 command and this little button over here. I don't even know what the name of this button is, but I, but it, it changes the the font size real quick for me. Okay, it's by the, the P, the letter P. <laughs> Those little buttons over there. Um, the brackets, that's what they are, the little brackets. Okay, um, ever be. There it is, that looks pretty good. Okay, and it's definitely coming together. The only problem is, you know, when we copy and paste it from the web, it put all our chords inside the sentences. Dang it, because we want it above the sentences. And so at this point, you might get, you know, since you're new to this, you might get sort of discouraged. You might be like, oh gosh, now I got to do this. And maybe you don't even do it. You don't even do it. You just bold all the chords. Don't do that. Don't give up. Don't, just because something's a little hard or challenging, that you decide to give in and whatever, okay? Because what's going to happen is anytime you create a chord chart, you're going to be using that chord chart for years and years to come, especially if it's a great song. You might play this 50 times over the next couple years, all right? And if you have a chord chart that's sort of subpar, every time you bring the chord chart up, you're going to be like, oh gosh, I wish I would have done it right the first time, or gosh, this is so confusing. And I don't ever want you to have to go through that. So Put in a little extra time, maybe 10 minutes extra time, to get everything perfect on your chord chart, and then it will last you for years, and you won't ever have to edit it again or have to go back, okay? 
So I'm going to begin to edit the chords, and I'm going to show you how I do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking through the song in my head as I do this. Eventually, we're going to go back and play through it all, right, to make sure everything's right. But for now, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to make it everything clear. And so this intro, I want to have a little space easier to see when I'm far away. I'm going to put some spaces in between my chords. I also want to play this twice. So what I'm going to do is put a bunch of spaces and copy it like this. Now I can see I'm supposed to play that intro twice. I also know that my intro down here, I only want to play once. So I'm going to put it down there once like this. Okay. Sometimes even if I need to save space, I'll just take intro out entirely like this and I'll just have the chords. I think I think that works great too. You can you can see that it that it's like that. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to leave intro out. Sometimes I will do that if there's just a little uh, you know, you know, there's a few chords we're playing in between a chorus and verse, I'll I won't even have a heading. I'll just have the chords. All right, and so verse one, what I'm going to start doing is transferring all these. So D, oops, let me take the, let me take that off. So right now I'm just going to transfer them. So I can see that there's a D, E minor, and G chord in this. So I'm just going to type them out like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab them over. I'm tabbing, and then you can use your space bar to hone it in. And then I'm going to take it out. So this does take a little bit of time, right? But you can get pretty fast at it, okay? And I'm gonna just do the example of this verse, okay? And then and then I'm gonna skip ahead, okay? And so we got a vow that is tested, tested. Oops, I need to put over tested, like a covenant, covenant of old. Okay, D, your love is enduring, E minor, oops, E minor, winter, rain, G, I'm just holding down the space bar there to get it, you're on the horizon of mercy for today, oh, I can see something here, okay, I want to show you something, beyond the horizon, with mercy, I can hear that chord change in my head, so F sharp minor should be over the word horizon. Horizon. You got that minor with mer. You got that A chord with mercy for today. Okay, now here's something I can see. See how the pre chorus has the G chord at faithful? So if you were playing with a band, everyone, and they had never heard this song before, let's say you just throw this in at the last minute, they had never heard it, they're going to think they're supposed to change to a G chord on the word faithful. But. We can hear in the song that he goes, mercy for today, and on the syllable day of today, it changes to G. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it in there that we got to play a G. So this is what I'm talking about. Even though this chord chart comes from Bethel music, there can be some things that you want to hone so that they're even more, even, even more perfect, I guess you could say, so where it's exact, okay, to take that guesswork out. Today, faithful you have been. All right, and I'm going to keep going through, okay, and uh, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit so that it's done, and I'm going to talk about what we do once we've uh, gotten all the chords correct. Well, as you see, I have now finished the rest of the song. I've put all the chords in, okay, in the right spots. Now, I will say that as you're doing this, sometimes you, you might actually have to grab your guitar like this. I'm going to grab my guitar here and play through because sometimes you might not be sure of the placement exactly okay and it, as you get good at this you can sort of hear it in your head eventually but starting at the beginning that might be kind of hard and I, I noticed that um, you know at the end of this this bridge right here okay there was actually a D chord written right here by the word Lord and I realized I didn't want that in there I didn't want to switch to a D chord on that word Lord I wanted if we were going to repeat the bridge I wanted whoever's reading it just to come back to this D. So I sort of had to play through that, right? If I play these last two lines, so. You, you will be praised, you will be praised. B minor. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you, Lord. See how it doesn't go to D yet, even though I've sung the word Lord? And then you go back to D at the beginning of the bridge when you repeat it. And you will be praised. You will be praised. So that's just an example of, 
you need to have your guitar with you as you go through this so that you can make sure that the chords are over the words where you want them and where it feels right because sometimes especially when that through that copy and paste transition things can get messed up I do want to mention something here though look at the bridge right now it only looks like we play the bridge one time right and so your worship team that's gonna be a question they're gonna be like how many times do we play the bridge that will go through their mind and so it's important to have that drawn out. Anything that's going to go through your mind, you want to make sure there's an answer for it on your chord chart if you want this to be as clear as possible. So what I'm going to do is at the end of it, I'm just going to put times four. Okay, then when your team gets to the end of that line, they see that, boom, they're done. You can even bold it if you want, okay, to make sure they see that it's times four. I mean, you can do whatever you want there. A lot of times I won't bold it. I'll just, I'll just keep it like that. Same with the chorus. The chorus, I want to have times two. So that every time we do the chorus, that means we're going to play through this, these two lines twice. We're going to do it again. Okay? So that's what that means. All right. Well, now everything looks right, but there's still a couple things that are off, right? So this is obviously two pages, which I said earlier I never want. I always want it to fit on one. All right, and part of that was making sure that we have uh, plenty of lyrics on one line, like this verse two, right? It was it was like eight lines, and we turned it into four lines of lyrics instead of eight, so that's a big space saver. Um, but let's do this before we go on to that. What I do with the chords to make them stand out even more, okay, is I go in and I highlight all the chords we just put in. Right now they're in the right place. Oops, I like them all. Oops, I'll just have to go back and finish that later. So I come in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bold. Okay, I'm just selecting them. I'm going to bold. All right. This is going to help us see it really easy. And then what I'm going to do, all right, is I'm going to turn them. Now, I don't always do this. Like in the core charts we have for this program, I didn't uh, change their color. But sometimes I like to do this. Um, so this is the one time where it can change for me, but um, I've started to do this more and more. I kind of like it. I will actually turn them red. Red. Okay. And then what I will do is that, that red's actually a little bright for me, the standard red that comes with words. So I will actually go to more colors and I will, I will turn it down a little bit and make it a little darker so it's not quite as bright. And there we go. Okay. And I'm going to take this unbold and put that back as black. Okay. There we go. Now, it really pops, right? If you were looking at this page, it was printed out, you'd, you'd very clearly be able to see the sections of the song and the chords together, all right? Because now they're a different color also. And so if you're printing this in color or if it's on a screen, of course it will be in color, so you can have that. But if you're plenty, or I'm sorry, printing on a black and white printer, the red will also show up as very dark, so it still has a lot of contrast with the page, so that's not a problem there. But the, the red does print out typically as a very dark gray, so there will be a little more contrast between the dark gray when it's printed out black and white of the chord and the black of the heading of each section of the song, right? So there's a little contrast there, which is actually nice. I like that. So that works whether you're printing black or white. Well, let's talk about this issue of not having it on one page. What can we do? Well, you might think, oh, I'll just decrease the font size. Well, you really don't want to have to do that, okay, if you don't have to. What I actually do is decrease the spacing between lines, okay? And I'm going to show you how I do that. So what I'll do is I'm going to highlight everything, and let's see if this can take care of the problem. I haven't tried this yet. We'll see, okay? So you need to find on your program uh, where line spacing is. And in my program, it's right here, this button. Okay, and right now I can see they don't have, I need actually, right now it's at one, and I need to go smaller than that, and they don't have the options, so I think I have to go to line spacing options, yes. Okay, and I'm, I'm having to figure it out here, okay, line spacing. What I'm going to say is I want to go down to point nine. okay, so if you're at one, which is the standard for everything, I'm going to go down to point nine. Let's see if that, did you see how that changed it? Look, here's undone, and here's it, here it is redone. Boom. Let's see if that took care of it. Barely, okay, barely took care of it. 
So we've just got this one tiny little line left. Is there a way we can take it out? Well, check check this out, okay? This says intro right here, right? Let's see if this does it. What if I take out the word intro? That did it, okay? And I can make sure I have some spaces on that page. There we go, now it's gone. I deleted them. All right, the reason I could take out intro is because it is clear and obvious that the first chords of the song are the intro. Most bands can infer that. That's not gonna be confusing for them. Especially here, these chords here, that's not confusing that bands know, okay, we're just playing those chords before, ver before verse two. So that is a very good option if you have it like that. That actually happens to me a lot where I change line spacing and I, and I just have one tiny little line left. Well, I can take care of it by taking out maybe that intro line. And if that didn't work, then maybe I could decrease the font size like this to, Oops, I'm sorry, not 11 points, 11.5, like you can do a half size, right? And do everything down a, another little half, okay? And then you could take every B back up to its right size. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna undo all that, but, so that's how I take care of it. And this is a nice looking chord chart. Look at this thing. That is how I do every single chord chart in this format, right here. I love it, it works great. I use it with all the bands I play with. I use it for myself. And um, so this is it now. I would save it, right? So I'll save it. Okay, and I just save it as a Word document. I, I do everything in Dropbox, right? So I would put it on Dropbox, I would put it in my worship songs, and I would press save, right? So now Everbe is saved into my Dropbox folder. The reason I'm using Dropbox, okay, you could just save it on your computer and whatever file, but I use Dropbox, okay, to so here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up my Dropbox folder here. So let's open up this song. All right, now it pops up in my worship folder. I have all these songs in here. And here's Ever Be, okay, the one I just created. Look, I can pop up the little preview of it, all right? And then in my program on my iPad, right? So I, I use OnSong, O-N-S-O-N-G. There's a little import function, right? And so I would import from Dropbox and I would find that file on Dropbox and I would click it and then I could import it, right? And now I can, and then it'll let me, it'll say, do you wanna convert this to on song? And you say yes and then boom, there you have it. Now you have this chart in in an on song format where on on song, of course, you can change all, the, see all these, these chords, right? You can just change them by clicking a button. Like right now we're in the key of, what does this look like? D. I think it's D, right? D, your love. Yeah, it's D. Yeah, so this song's in D right now in this chord chart, and if you want it in a different key, of course, um, if you have that chord chart program, you can just press a button, slide the little slider, it'll change it to whatever key you want. If you don't have a program like that, well, you're gonna have to go in and manually change every one of these chords, okay? And you'll wanna save another copy of it, right? You could say this is ever be key of D. And then let's say you wanna go a little higher, key of E, right? Because remember how we talked about if you have a band, like if you're using a capo, okay? And you still wanna play this D chord shape or whatever, but you wanna use a capo. Well, if you have other people in your band that don't use capos like keyboard or bass, then they have to have a chord chart written out that is actually in the different key with all the different chords. So that is why I highly suggest getting a chord chart program that lets you import a Word document, okay, and, and it converts it into its file type so that you can change it. The only other thing about OnSong um, or other chord charts like it is sometimes when it imports from Word, the chords will be a little shifted, they'll be off. And actually in Ansan, there's a, there's a thing where you can actually fix the alignment spaces. If they're a little off, you just go in and press fix alignment spaces and it moves them back a little bit. Um, so you might have to adjust the words that the chords are over a little bit from time to time. But if you get it pretty much good like this um, on a chord chart, it'll work, it'll work great for you. Um, so yeah, so that's it. And uh, that is how you make a chord chart and go ahead and give it give it a lot of practice go ahead and find a song that maybe a new worship song that has just come out and you don't have a chord chart for it yet and go ahead and find it online if you can from their website and then do what we just learned how to do 
put it, uh, copy and paste it, put it in this format, make sure the chords are over the words correctly and they're the chords you want to play and then everything looks kosher. And then there you have it. Save it off and import it into your chord chart program. All right, well, have fun making chord charts.